Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is another edition, first edition of the summer, in fact, of Tottenham Transfer Talk with Greg Stobart from Squawker. Greg, how are you? I'm very good, thank you, Barnaby. It's lovely to have you back. Those of you who've been watching Spurred On for a while know that Greg is our transfer guru, and not just transfers, all things kind of inside the club, little bits of information that he's been hearing on the grapevine. So let's get started. I think we all know... Uh, and we've known, let's face it, since August last year that we need another striker. So let's talk about some strikers that Spurs are interested in. And the one that keeps coming back and keeps being talked about, Mishi Batshuayi. Did I say it right? I say Batshuayi, Barnaby, but I don't actually know. What we do know is that Maurizio, po he's the only striker which Maurizio Pochettino's actually mentioned by name, isn't he? He yeah. gave that interview in France yeah. saying he liked him. And he is the number one target for Tottenham this summer. There are a lot of clubs who were in for him. But mm. Spurs seem pretty confident, I've got to say. You speak to people at Tottenham, they say, he wants to come, we think we can do a deal. He'd be perfect for what we're looking for, which is someone to either partner or as a backup to Harry Kane. You speak to people in France, they're not quite as certain that he'll be going to Tottenham because a lot of haggling over the transfer fee is going to be more than £30 million by the look of things. But yeah. Spurs have still got the £24 million they bid for Berahino last summer. Yeah. Plus the Champions League Knocking money. Knocking about, it's got yeah. interest on it now. Yeah, plus the Champions League money. So they can afford it if he's the one they really want. And I think the idea now is to be really targeted. No more messing around. Yeah. If he's the one they want, I think they're going to make it happen and they're pretty confident. OK, and lots of talk at the moment that West Ham, in fact, in fact, not just with Batshuayi, not just with him, but a lot of players that we seemingly are interested in, um, West Ham are putting early bids in for. I mean, obviously West Ham have the stadium, uh, so there'll be a lot more corporate money. And um, I think they finished above where they were expecting to finish. So are we kind of swimming in the same transfer waters? Or would you say the fact that we've got guaranteed Champions League football should put us ahead in terms of players we could get? Well, as you mentioned, they're really ambitious, West Ham, for a top quality striker. So yeah. in that sense, there aren't that many around, are there? No. We're talking about the same names, Michi Batshawi, Alexandra, Lacazette, Lacazette yeah. those kind of players. Yeah, I, I guess you could say Tottenham are going for the same players as West Ham in that sense. But... I think Tottenham would be quite happy to let West Ham do their legwork for them on bat, shall we? That's a very Daniel <laughs> Levy, yeah, yeah. Levy way of doing it, isn't it? Like, you you do all the, the donkey work and then we'll come in at the end and try and nick him. Yeah, and I think David Sullivan's even been saying himself, they made a 31 billion... Billion? Yep, 31. 30, <laughs> well, David, David <laughs> Sullivan probably yeah, yeah. would put a 31 yeah, billion yeah. pound bidding because he's crazy. Yeah, the government probably gave them the money, didn't yes, they? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, they made a 31 million pound bid for Alexandre Lacazette because they think they can sign him but I don't think they think they can get back, shall we? There's too much competition because there's Tottenham, Arsenal are sniffing around, mm. Borussia Dortmund are looking at him because they're a bit worried Aubameyang might leave. Lots of competition for back, shall we? So I wouldn't worry about West Ham on back, shall we? If they want Lacazette, they're going to have to spend £40 million to get him. That is so much money. It's ridiculous. It strikes me a little bit, you know, before we get on to the other strikers we're interested in, that, you know, obviously there's money, more money from the, tra uh, you know, from the Premier League deal, more money from the Champions League, uh, but it doesn't necessarily feel like we're going to spend a lot of money because obviously in terms of the last few years we haven't spent any money overall in terms of you know transfers over the sales we've made. Yeah, as, as you mentioned, they didn't spend their whole budget last summer mm. because they didn't buy Berahino yeah. for a start. They've got the Champions League this year. We've been turning a profit lately. I don't think... I think overall under Pochettino, Tottenham are actually in profit. Yeah, we for, are about, for, si I think, six to ten million. But we've got the stadium. Yeah, All the money is going well, to the stadium. Well, that's where it goes... You've got a massive stadium to build, and I'm not sure they haven't exactly worked out how they're going to pay for the stadium. Right. So, as Pochettino said all along, it's a balancing act, and it's about being clever in the transfer market. That let's be honest, Tottenham can't compete with no. Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United for players anyway. So you've no. got to be clever. You've got to get De the Deli Alleys and yeah. the Eric Dyers, and then you find a player for 15, 20 million pounds, and you turn him into a 40 million pound player, and it's worked so far. That's the plan. Okay, so um, uh, more kind of uh, talk this week about Islam Slimani from Sporting. Is that, a, is that a go? Is that a possible? I think he's one they've been watching. Uh, what people at Tottenham say about the Portuguese league is very hard to trust. We, even the players we've seen come over from Portugal in the last few years, Eliakim Mangala was wanted by every big club yeah. across Europe and he was tearing it up for Porto and he's come to Premier League and it's a very different yeah. environment. So I think when you're talking big money, there's a worry there that the form won't translate because in Portugal, you've got the European games and then you've got two or three games against Braga and yeah. Benfica and so, other than that. So basically there are more nannies and Helder Postigas than there are Cristiano Ronaldo's. Uh, OK, so let's go on to, you mentioned him, Berahino. Is that still alive and kicking? Because I, I read only about two months ago a Guardian piece 
saying um, that uh, the relationship had thawed a little between Daniel Levy and Jeremy Peace, and maybe that was back on the table. Possible, but I think Tottenham have moved on now. Really? As a fan, I think, have you moved on from the Berahino saga? Well, it, because it was such a saga, I guess I have. But do I still think Berahino is a good option because he can play in the three behind as well? And possibly, uh, but his attitude, I guess, is yeah. a bit of an issue. And he's got and he's got pace, and he's a dribbler. But I think Tottenham are looking at bigger and better things okay. now. And I think there is too much bad blood. Yeah. The one th I think we've mentioned this before. The one thing with Berahino is. He's represented by Stella Group now, yeah. who are, of course, Gareth Bale's, Gareth Bale's agent. Yeah. And he's got Jonathan Barnett, the, the, uh, the chairman, has got a very good relationship with Daniel Levy, and he might try and use that to his advantage to get the deal over the line. OK. Uh, well, he missed two penalties at the end of the season in one <laughs> yeah. game, didn't he? That didn't look that good. That surely sent his transfer value down. Um, you mentioned to me off-camera Briel Mbolo. Talk a bit to me about that. He's Basel, isn't he? Basel player, striker. Yeah, really good player. Young, same, same kind of... Mould as Batshawi and Lacazette, the players mm -hmm. we've been talking about. Fast, plays on the shoulder, loads of potential, bit raw, scores goals. Very, very expensive, considering he plays for Basel yeah. and he's only a kid. I think he's only 19 How still. can Basel expect so much money when it's just the Swiss league, dare I say? Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one. I think it's because he's so hyped. And I don't think Tottenham would take a gamble. It's a gamble. Yeah. I mean... Spurs tried to sign Anthony Martial last year, and now you think that would have been a gamble well, worth taking. We were, we were quoted at like 26, weren't yeah, we? And yeah, then he ended yeah, up yeah. going for you know it, 60 with add-ons. It might end up being that, but, it, but it's a big risk for Tottenham when, as you mentioned before, we don't have fortunes yeah. to pay yeah. on new players. And Juventus are looking at him as well, and I think he'll probably end up there. Yeah, there was a, another more talk about uh, another player who West Ham are going for as well, um, Callum Wilson at Bournemouth. Strikes me as odd when I hear these stories when a player has been out injured with an ACL for a season. Is that is it just rubbish paper talk? I've not heard that one. I've got really? To say, I've got there were stories. There's certainly stories of uh, Cal Spurs being into Callum Wilson and Matt Ritchie at Bournemouth. And oh, West we Ham, really are copying West Ham. And West Ham, huh? Ham having put a 25 million bid in and having it rejected. Yeah, well, I, I saw that, the West Ham story. It strikes me a little bit like those kind of signings uh, potentially feel. a kind of almost likely based on what we did in the last couple of seasons getting Trippier and Ben Davis so kind of you know players who've done well at lower to middling clubs in the Premier League trying to get them for like the 10 to 12 13 million well Callum Wilson's a very good player but as you mentioned yeah. he's missed most of the season with an injury yeah. and it depends whether you're looking for someone who's going to be full stop back up to Kane I guess mm. or whether you want someone who can actually play with him yeah. or in challenge the same him inside or even push him yeah Push him. I mean, Kane's, Kane's mentality has been superb because he's played every game and he knows no one's behind him. But to push himself that hard, yeah. sometimes a lot. Usually, you'd want someone there putting a bit of pressure on him. Yeah, so maybe absolutely. you can get Callum Wilson. And just think it. how many goals Kane might score if he scores before November. You know, that <laughs> yeah. would be incredible. So, um, out of all those strikers we talked about, you are you saying that you think Batshawi is the most likely the one that they're really going for? I think Batshawi will happen. I think it'll be expensive. It'll be thirty to thirty-five million so pounds. Transfer record. And I don't think it's going to happen until after the Euros. So his camp is saying they're quite happy for him to go to the Euros, hopefully play. Yeah. He's in, their in the Belgium squad. He scored two and two for Belgium. So he's, yeah. he's, he's fresh for the national team, but he scored yeah. goals. Yeah, and he had a good record. I think he scored 17 goals in Liga for Marseille this season. They had an awful season, yeah, so that's, that's right. actually a really good record too. I think his camp are quite happy to see, play it out, play it by ear, let, let the clubs haggle and argue between themselves and then do a deal. In, ju right. in July, so I think it'll be about showy, but I don't expect it to happen before the Euros. Okay, which is realistic with Spurs. We never do anything early, although we kind of wish we could. Well, Tottenham um, could do with a midfielder early because Dembele's out for the first four games. Well, that season. brings me <laughs> nicely yeah. on, Greg, yeah. to uh, the midfielders that we've been talking about uh, or that rumours have been talking about. You're quite sure that uh, the Victor Wanyama thing might come back up? Yeah, well, they tried last year let's mm -hmm. be honest they even right at the end of the window last year they bid 15 million pounds plus Eric Lamella on loan mm. which in hindsight would have been yeah pretty poor deal for Tottenham because I mean, Lamella turned out yeah, pretty he, well didn't he? I, we were saying I think Lamella was one of our best players in the last three four five weeks of the yeah. season I mean I was really impressed by Wanyama when Southampton came to White Hart Lane I know there are some reservations about his disciplinary record mm -hmm. you can't afford a player to get sent off or to make rash challenges but really when Dembele is out you just want that physical, you want to replace a physical presence yeah. more than you want to replace a footballing ability almost, don't you? You've seen Tottenham getting overrun without him. Yeah. I think when Yama fits the bill, you stick him there with Eric Dyer, close it up, win the ball, he's okay on the ball, and then you, 
let the others get on with it, sort yeah. of win it and give it back. And I do I do feel we missed, obviously we did miss Dembele, but what I'd say more in the Newcastle and Southampton games that we missed was Deli Alley because, you know, I know Ryan Mason had a bad couple of games, but at least if he'd had Alley in front of him, he'd have had someone breaking between the lines and, and, and bringing other players into, or getting more space for the other players, if anything. Yeah. I mean, that's also why we're talking about these quick strikers as well because you're right they're all running towards the ball and there's no one going the other way yeah. and it lets the other team squeeze the space as yeah. well so you're right they're the, they're the, there's where Tottenham need to improve they need a striker they need a central midfielder yeah. and they could do with a winger as well a bit of a bit of speed out wide. Yeah, well, uh, but that's why I'm, I might. That's why I kind of mentioned the Matt Ritchie thing because I do quite like him. He's obviously got a, lo- a wand of a left foot. Seems like a kind of Spurs type signing. He's a Spursy player, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, it's one of those you always worry that he's played well at Bournemouth. He'll come to Tottenham and then not really play. A bit of yeah. a Gilfie Sigurdsson or a Clint Dempsey. Yeah. That would be my worry with Matt Ritchie. I'm really interested in the Andre Scherler. Yes, that's yeah, right. Uh, because rumours of twenty-two million for yeah, Well, yeah, so someone mentioned it to me last week, and I have I haven't been able to stand it up and write a story on it, but it's been in the German press as well. And Tottenham did try to sign him from Chelsea before he went to yeah. Wolfsburg. Yeah. Obviously, Chelsea weren't having it because they just won't deal with Tottenham. But World Cup winner, Premier League winner, lots of experience, yeah. scores goals and pacing behind. Germans always have a good attitude as well, uh, you know. So I. I always think of them, they don't mind if they're going to miss a game here or there. And you mentioned the attitude, and that's huge for Pochettino as well, which is why I don't think Berahino will happen as well. Yeah. He said, I've been going to his press conferences the last few months, and every time he says, I won't sign a play for the sake of it. Yeah. I'm not going to sign someone who's going to come in and disrupt the team spirit. Yeah. So Spurs wouldn't go for someone like Ibrahimovic because they'd be so yeah. worried about losing this amazing team spirit they've yeah. got where they're all in. The, ad, the Adebayor factor coming Yeah, back. exactly. And they're, you know, they're all in a WhatsApp group and they're all texting and joking. And they're building yeah. a real old school team spirit. And Pochettino's worked really hard to get that. That's why they ditched all those players last summer yeah. as well. So yeah. I don't. I think they've got to be really careful with the profiling of the players. Yeah, not, not many of these players that we're talking about, I'd say, are kind of ego players. No. They seem to fit the bill. Um, you mentioned to me uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach's Mahmoud Dahoud. Yeah. Tell us a bit more he's about him. He's really good. He's a dribbler and a passer. So if you're looking for your Dembele yeah. alternative, he's about as close as you can get, really. Liverpool very much like him they're the clock factor there too yeah. although they're not in the Champions League now I think they're not we, we've just re- we're recording this on Thursday so it was only last night that Liverpool unfortunately for them yeah. lost uh, yeah. in, the, in the Europa League final a real shame the clock that, factor yeah. is a thing though I believe and, and I think Goethe might end up going to them because of that and I feel like we should be in for a Mario Goethe if he wants to come to the Premier League London you know why aren't we playing for, for or going for a player like that you know I think he'd be fantastic for yeah. Tottenham maybe a little bit too similar to Ericsson but Maybe. more of a goal scorer than goal yeah. scorer than Ericsson, but certainly that's one. But Dahoud, like I said, good player. The thing with Munch and Gablack is they've lost Nordvite, who's gone to West Ham on a free transfer. Mm-hmm. It's looking pretty likely that Granit Xhaka is going to go to Arsenal as well. So mm. he's potentially better than Xhaka. So I think they'll really dig their heels in right. to try and keep him for at least one more year. Right. Although if I were him, I'd be like, all my teammates are going. I <laughs> yeah, want to yeah. sod off as well. Uh, all right. And finally, one that I know a lot of Tottenham fans talk about and has been rumoured over time, Axel Witzel. Now, he's at uh, Zenit with uh, AVB, although AVB's leaving, isn't he? Yeah, at the end of the season. he's off. Um, so Zenit, obviously, oil money, it's probably on too much wages, isn't he? Big wages. And he's a George Mendes client as well. Mm. So they all jump between the same clubs, don't they? Yeah. So. Um, you know, Benfica, Zenit St. Petersburg, very high George Mendes, Mendes influence yeah. there. Valencia, so you're looking at, you know, Valencia, Man United. Chelsea were banging for Witzel last summer, and I think Chelsea yeah. would be a more likely option. But another one, physical, strong, yeah. good on the ball. Fantastic but afro. Tottenham aren't going to pay him £100,000 a week when you've no. got Deli Alli on £35,000 and Harry yeah. Kane on similar amount. It's just not how they're operating. It's similar to what you said about the, the bonding and stuff. You know, They don't want people to come in who are going to blow other other players out of the water in terms of wages. Because players, let's face it, they do get annoyed. At, you know, They find out what everyone's on and they get annoyed. They yeah. want to be growing together. Um, yeah. OK, so uh, out of all those, would you say the most likely is uh, Wanyama? Yeah, probably? so I've got Batshawi coming in up front and Man- Wanyama, central midfielder. And I right. think I think the thing with Tottenham, we're looking at as a Spurs fan, pretty happy with the first eleven. Oh yeah, and I think Pochettino's pretty much said that as well. It's yeah. a squad, isn't it? Yeah. So if you've got an injury or you need to rotate the squad because of the Champions League, bringing in the likes of Wanyama and Batshawi shouldn't affect them too much. Yeah. Whereas when you're bringing in Chadley, Ng, Alex, uh, Alex Carroll, he works Tom for, Carroll, Alex Carroll works for QPR. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, bring in uh, Alex. Yeah. So it's yeah. about strengthening in depth. 
the depth of the squad as much as anything. Okay, so that brings us to uh, potential players who might leave the club. Now, it feels a lot different to last summer where, um, you know, not only did we feel like a lot of players would have to go, they did go and we made a lot of money. It doesn't strike me that there's a lot of money to be made on transfers uh, leaving the club at the moment. So I'm just going to mention these names to you and let us know which ones you think are likely to go. So obviously Ryan Mason and Tom Carroll, I think it's fair to say, um, people are quite keen for Mason to go, a lot of fans. Tom Carroll, just whilst we're talking about him, a lot of talk that he's out of contract, but you say he's not out of contract. No, he's not out of contract. So that why do some people seem to write about the fact that he is? I don't know, but it's not true. Okay. He's got another year left. They'll listen to offers for him, but he's certainly not out of contract. So if he leaves, okay. there'll be a transfer fee. Okay, so um, Nabil Bentaleb, Nathan Adouou, who's being talked about not having, uh, not interest in signing contract. That's DeAndre true. Yedlin obviously has been out on loan, and then also Nasser Chadley and Clinton and G. Out of those, you know, which ones would you say are the, are the most likely to go? Uh, I think Mason and Carroll will both leave. Mm -hmm. There's certainly truth in Bournemouth's interest. In, in both? In, yeah. Ryan in Ryan Mason. Mason. In Ryan Mason. Ryan Mason, in fairness, I mean, I know he had a bad run. I've talked about this a few times. I think with Ryan Mason, he's the kind of player who needs games. If, you, if yeah. he played five games and his confidence got back up, I think he'd, you know, he'd be a good player again. Let's not forget, he won an England cap in yeah. like a year yeah. ago. He was a starter last season. He's obviously yeah. lost form, he's lost his confidence and he's lost his rhythm. But the fact is, it'll be even harder for him next year because they'll sign someone else yeah. and he needs games. And if you're a player who needs games, go to Bournemouth and you'll play every week. Yes, uh, and, and he fits them because he's a passing footballer. Yeah. There's truth in your do with things, certainly. The, Having so difficulties. Is he that. a player? Is Nathan Adu a, a player who's got a bit above his station? He went to Rangers. He played about five games. Everyone was raving about him because he did a nice flick, uh, and then Rangers kind of bombed him off. And then he's come back yeah. and doesn't fancy it. I don't think he's, he's nowhere near ready for the first team. I don't think Tottenham will be crying about that. Yeah. I think that's a problem. Tottenham are actually pretty good with this. They don't play. They don't pay their youth players a lot. Your standard mm. your standard contract for a youth player starting at Tottenham is. Forty thousand pounds a year, right? Which is quite a lot to. So they don't do a Chelsea where they pay where Ruben Loftus Cheek sixty grand well, a week. And Chelsea, Chelsea for a, Chelsea will pay someone two hundred thousand pounds a year, mm. and Arsenal pay about one hundred and twenty. So Tottenham's idea is to keep them young and hungry, so you don't end up like Josh McEachern and those yeah. kind of players. And they're trying to. They promise, hey, you work here, you'll be in the team, earning far more than those guys yeah. in a few years' time. But and, if he doesn't for work, longer, yeah. But is that why you think we lost Ismail Azoui, for instance, last year? Because he went off to a German club, didn't he? I think that might be. I think that might be part of it. I don't think he was particularly settled either. Marcus Edwards is an interesting one mm. because at some point he's going to ask for money and he's going to have clubs offering him a lot of money. But like I said, Tottenham's whole the whole philosophy, and they won't change it. They're not going to make an exception for someone like Marcus Edwards. The whole philosophy is we'll pay you. We won't pay you fortunes. We'll pay you a good amount. Yeah. But you've got to be hungry and force your way into the team. This is what annoys me because if you're Marcus Edwards, who's you know a great hope in the academy, you must look at Spurs and think this is the best chance I've got at any yeah. club to get in the in the first team in the Premier League. And then you look at Deli Ali, you know, obviously he didn't come yeah. up the academy, but he comes in League One, so he wasn't expected to play many games. Even he said, you know, my aim was to play ten games. Look at Deli Ali; he's now a guaranteed starter in the Euros for England. He's signed at least one new contract. Will probably sign another one. Harry Kane signed four new contracts in the last year. If you're someone like Marcus Edwards, why don't you look at that and say, all right, I'll wait a bit. I won't earn that much right now, but my best chance, if I'm as good as I think I am or people think I am, then this is my best shot. I think that's exactly what Tottenham say. You yeah. should work for them and sell it, wanna be. But yeah. yeah, it's the best place to be for a young player at the moment, and I think Spurs know that, and yeah. they'll use that. And if I do wants to leave, I don't think there'll be too many tears shed. Yeah, that's true. Uh, attitude problems do not fit in down at Hotspur <laughs> Lane. OK, um, DeAndre Yedlin. Now, he's actually done well uh, on loan at Sunderland. And I have to say, I think working under Sam Allardyce has been the best thing for him because he, he's come out and said his defence, uh, his defensive game has improved and it certainly has from what I've seen. Yeah, and they want him permanently. Yeah. And I think it'll probably happen unless Tottenham still want to sell shirts in America. I hate to be cynical, mm. but they've got... Kyle Walker, Kieran Trippier, Kyle Walker-Peters coming through as yes, well. Yes, they rate him, don't they? Yeah, highly? and I don't think Yedlin defensively has been... He's got a lot better, yeah. but I don't think he's ever going to be up to Tottenham standard. Okay. So if they can get a few million for him, I think that would be a good deal for the player yep. and for the club. OK, and um, Nasser Chadley. Now, Nasser, when I went to the pre-season tournament over in Munich, I, I just was watching those games and I thought he's going to have an amazing season this year. He's going to push on. He scored 10 league goals last year couple of injuries, but also just he doesn't strike me as a player who is comfortable coming on to change the game, coming off the bench. He needs to be involved in everything. I'd certainly agree with that. I don't know anything about whether he's leaving or not, but when you're talking about these attacking players potentially coming in, 
and like you said, he doesn't really seem to fit in. He's not making an impact off the bench. Yeah, didn't get to the, into the yeah. Belgian squad. That will no, probably that affect his mind. Yeah. He had a good month or so, didn't he? In January, he scored a few in the FA Cup, and he yeah. was coming on as a sub and scoring. But he doesn't look confident, does he? Can't you really that. want him to put his head down and take players on and yeah. get in the box, but he kind of comes on and trots around a little bit. And that chance he missed against Southampton, that would have got a second place yeah. right at the end. He just needs. I think you're at the stage now where you've got to be ruthless if you're Tottenham. You're, yeah. you're not looking at building something and finishing the top six now. You want to you've challenge to, for the title. Yeah, and you've so. got to keep... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And it's more important to keep the players that are already there. Yeah. You know, your Ericsson, Vertonghen, and Zora's Yeah, so, and very nice. That brings on nicely. So we mentioned Tom Car Carroll's contract. Are you saying to me just before you think uh, tying people down is almost the priority uh, this summer before then getting people in? Yeah, uh, and I know for a fact Christian Eriksen, for example, is waiting for Pochettino to sign his new contract before right. committing Which he to now his. has. Yeah, so uh, hopefully that will act as the yeah. catalyst for the rest of them. But Eriksen, Lamella, Vertonghen are the priorities. Yeah. They're talking to Kane and Loris. These talks have been going on for months as well. They're in the Champions League. The wage bill is going to go up. This yeah. is part of, you know, you have to factor that into your budgets because it's not just your transfer fee, it's the massive wages yeah, course, as well. Course, yeah. But they've earned, they've earned their new contracts, haven't they? Oh, absolutely. I think they'll all sign. I can't see anyone big leaving this summer, which is good. You're looking at that list, there's no one there who you'll be devastated no. to no. go. So No, absolutely not. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. And I kind of think, you know, I think with Ericsson uh, and Lamella, I feel like they're only a season away from like a proper brilliant, brilliant season, especially Ericsson, who I think, you know, he still gets a bit labelled by people. Oh, he's not scoring enough goals. He's not doing. He's fantastic. Yeah, I think he's still our best player. Technically, our best player. You fire the ball into him, he can take it at any speed and turn it. And his final ball is great. And Lamella, I think, you know, he's grown so far. And I think with a preseason under his belt, and knowing now that he's a starter, I think he could, he could, you know, he could just go massive next season. I really think so. Well, they're the two who are making, creating all the goals, aren't yeah. they? If you, think, if you think about those last couple of months of the yeah. season, they were creating every other goal, really. Yeah. And Ericsson, I think, has created more chances than anyone else since Christmas Pretty much, in yeah. the Premier League. So that shows you how important he's been. I thought he was a bit disappointing in the first few months of the season. But since Christmas, he's been absolutely oh. fantastic. It'd be yeah. nice to get him scoring a few goals again. Though. That's true. And he's going to have a nice break because Denmark didn't make it into the Euro. So hopefully he'll come back firing. Uh, Greg, thank you so much. It's been brilliant. Uh, guys, let us know what you thought of uh, all those players we were talking about in the comments section below. Are there any other players that you think we should be looking into buying uh, or letting go? Let us know and uh, you know start the conversation. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook, Spurred on TV. And keep behind your Spurs. Don't worry about the last few weeks of the season. It's over. We look ahead. Champions League football. A lot to be excited about. Come on, you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is the latest edition of Smithy vs. Slat. Smithy, oh, how I are love you? this feature, mate. It's brilliant. Smithy is 5 2 up, uh, which to me.